It is deeper than that. It is a war between those of us who love the United States of America and our founding ideals and a fringe minority who hates this country and what we stand for. It is a war between the managerial class and the everyday citizen. It goes beyond partisan lines. I actually went to Rome a couple weeks ago. Met with European leaders. I can tell you something going on in the West right now. It is a war between the Great Reset and the Great Uprising that says hell no to that vision. That's what this is about. And I think that you gotta know you're in a war to win one. I don't use that word lightly. War is one of these things that can speak itself into existence. Our founding fathers understood that 250 years ago. You can only win a war if you understand that you're in one. And I call it a war because there's no middle ground here. Either you believe in merit or you believe in group quotas. You can't have both. Either you believe in free speech or you believe in censorship. You cannot have both. Either you believe in American exceptionalism or you believe in apologizing for who we are. You cannot have both of these things at the same time. Right now, more than ever, we need a commander-in-chief who is going to lead us to victory in that war. And this year, that man is going to be Donald J. Trump. The just one man who comes from on high or some politician from Congress who comes down to save us. If we are going to be saved as a nation, <coughs> it is going to be because we save ourselves. And that's what today is really about. Look at ourselves in the mirror and asking ourselves, what does it mean to be an American? What does it mean to make a sacrifice for this country? Look into our founding fathers of 1776, many of whom were well off, 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence, pledging their lives, their honor, and their treasure for this country. The question for us is, what are we going to do for the country that we inhabit today? What does it even mean to be an American? We've lost our sense of our national identity in this country. You know, we as conservatives, we've fallen into this habit. I see it happening, it's not in 2022, it's why we had the red wave that never came. Yeah. And I want to make sure we don't make that mistake again this year. We can't just fall into the trap of criticizing the other side's endless policy failures and defining ourselves that way. We have to define what do we actually stand for. What does it mean to be a Republican? What does it mean to be a conservative? What does it mean to be an American in the year 2024? And to me, it means we believe in those ideals of 1776. Ideals like merit and the pursuit of excellence, that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. That's why we're against affirmative action and the DEI agenda and the racial equity audits and quota systems in this country. That's why we're gonna end affirmative action. It has been a cancer on our American soul and we are done with it. It means we believe in the rule of law in this country. Thank you. And I say this as the kid of legal immigrants to this country. That means your first act of entering this country cannot break the law. And that is why we will use our own military to secure our own southern border. And our northern border too. That's what it means to stand for the rule of law in the United States of America. Stop using our taxpayer money to fund Central American countries that are failing to solve the border crisis at each of those borders all the way from Venezuela to the southern border of Texas. Stop using our own federal money to fund sanctuary cities that are paying for the breakage of the rule of law. End birthright citizenship for the kids of illegals in this country because it does not apply to them. And if you're in this country illegally, you ought to be returned to your country of origin. That's what it means to stand for the rule of law in the United States of America. It means the people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government. Not the shadow government in the deep state, 